For those of you that is not quite familiar, <laughs> Ollie is just <laughs> blocking my view. <laughs> I'm a realtor in Vancouver and welcome to my channel. Ali has been doing a lot better since his surgery and we're just resting a lot, taking pain medication every eight hours and uh, so far he has still been wearing his little t-shirt and his little jackets to cover up the scar and to prevent him from scratching his scar um, but he's doing really well now. So we're staying home a lot these days and as I am home doing work, I recently got an email from Anthem Properties and this is in regards to their project Jinju. We just went to see this project a week and a half ago. And the sales center was beautiful and today I am looking at their advanced preview package which I want to share with you guys because they, they've got some really interesting things going on in this building some of their amenities is really cool and I just want to share some information with you guys so let's take a look okay so as I have Ollie here sitting in front of me staring at me I'm gonna just go through here the advanced preview package so this is an email that I got from the Anthem sales team and the events preview package opens up into a um, their PDF and let's just make this a little bigger. How do I make this bigger? Uh, da, 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 da. Let's open with preview. Okay, here we go. So there are 29 pages in this preview package and um, so I just wanted to explain a little bit about their name, the name for their building, why it's called Jinju is because in Korean, Jinju means pearl. So the idea behind the naming of this building was that they're they're creating a building like a pearl in the sky with their amenities in the sky and uh, a beautiful pearl in the city. So Jinju is the Korean word for pearl and is symbolic of prosperity, good health, and wisdom gained through experience. So this is the location. There is a 30 minute drive to downtown Vancouver, 20 minute drive to Metrotown and Burnaby, and only a 5 minute drive to the Lohi Town Center, which is really close by. Now, uh, there is a golf course, a very famous golf course. This is the Vancouver Golf Course, which is located only 6 minutes away from the building. Now, this right here is North Road. So this is a very well-known street in separating Burnaby from Coquitlam. The Burquitlam station or the Millennium Line Skytrain station is located right over here. And only a few minute walk is going to be the Jinju high-rise building. So as you can see, there is quite a lot of mountain views and beautiful city and also um, SFU is right over here. So that would be the closest mountain to, to the building. The location itself, this is the golf course, Skytrain really close by, and of course with shopping because the Lohi Town Center is only a few minutes away. And this is a photo of the Simon Fraser University. Alright, so here we can see a little bit more in regards to the location. So this right here is North Road. 
So this is what separates Burnaby on the left hand side with Coquitlam on the right hand side. And Jinju is located right over here, very close to the Burquitlam Skytrain station, which is right over here. This right here is the Lohi Town Center station. So the Skytrain, this Skytrain line right over here, this goes all the way into Port Moody and Coquitlam. And then this other Skytrain line that crosses through the Skytrain station is the Burnaby Skytrain station, uh, Skytrain line, I mean. And this runs between North Burnaby and South Burnaby, and eventually it heads towards Surrey. On this side, it goes to um, downtown Vancouver. Now, uh, this is what the Jinju building will look like. The building itself is 42 stories, and this right here in the middle upper part of the building is their amenity space. So we'll go through that in a little bit, but I am in love with the amenity space, the fact that it's up in the air and it's got views. Um, okay, let's take a look here. So this is a rendering of the lobby in the building. And then we have a rendering of the outdoor space that is planned for the building, the gym, and also this they are calling this the hosting lounge with the kitchen so you can host a party and things like that. And here we have the relaxation lounge and the yoga studio which is the yoga studio here it does say it's on level two of the building and while the relaxation lounge would be on level 28 which would be the amenities level that we saw in the building the, the one that's higher up in the building okay so this is the exciting part i really wanted to show you guys this so in the last few years actually um, I have cut out table salt from my diet and I've replaced it with sea salt and Himalayan salt. One of the reasons is um, health reasons for myself. I just don't want to take in so much salt in my diet and I want to replace that with something a little bit healthier. So when I saw this I was quite excited. I went to a convention a few years ago and I experienced one of these Himalayan salt rooms and it was so cool. So what this is, is everything on the wall here, this is all Himalayan salt. So it's the pink salt um, that they cut into bars and like bricks and they put it on the wall here and behind this wall would be um, heating lamps. It's got some healing abilities and of course it's very nice and calm in there. So they call this the warm salt medication room. And then on the bottom here we have the charcoal cool room. So that's really cool too. I, w I don't know how that would work. I've never been in one. But on the left hand side, this is their beautiful amenity. So this is a hot tub with mountain views, north facing mountain views. And all this is located on level 28 of the building. So even if you buy a home that's on the lower level with less view, what you could do is go to level 28 and enjoy your amenities and hang out there and look at the view. So that's really nice. Here we can see what the level 28 wellness spa area would look like. So this is the hot tub. Everything that surrounds this here, these are all windows. And then there's a big outdoor patio outside as well. But first of all, facing north and facing west would be the mountain view hot tub. And then we have the lounge and water station over here. Infrared sauna the charcoal cool room, and then the warm salt meditation room. And this is the relaxation lounge and the 180 degree panoramic sun deck. So that would be the outside patio. So all of this, great feature, I really like it.
Now, just on the other side, on the left-hand side here, we can see their level two and level three amenities. So in, on level two, they have the outdoor fireside lounges. So this all here, all this is outdoors. And then this encircles the inside of the building, which has the yoga studio, the kitchen and hosting lounge, the outdoor yoga space. So this part here is outdoors. And then this would be the gym. And there's also a music room back here as well. So that's the second floor. And then on level three, we have the executive boardroom on this corner here. And this area is the games and media lounge. We have a co-work space on the left-hand side. Um, and then these are the three elevators with the emergency staircase behind that. So all together, they'll have 25,000 square feet of indoor and outdoor amenity space. That's pretty impressive. So in case you haven't seen my video from the other day, I went to their sales center and um, walked through their two display homes. Everything is very beautiful. You can take a look at the link above. So here they have a view shot from the 42nd level of the building. For The building is 42 stories, so this would be the rooftop of the high rise. But this gives you a good idea of what you would be looking at in terms of um, directions and what you see in that direction. Okay, so here it says on the bottom, west, north, east, and south. So. Here you can see the sunrise. This is most likely a photo taken during the morning. So the sun rises on the east side and throughout the uh, afternoon it moves from the east side to the south side and then to the west side where the sun will set. So facing north on top of this mountain right here, this is Burnaby Mountain. So SFU, the Sino Fraser University is up here. And we can also see on this side here, beyond that, this would be Burnaby. So most likely one of these would be the Brentwood Town Center. And then we can also see Fraser River on the south side as well. So in this package, they've got a floor plate of what their homes would look like. So the floor plate is basically an overview of what the entire floor would look like combining all of the floor plans together. So this will show you what the floor play would look like between floors 9 to 27 and 30 to 40. This right here, the dark area, would be the concrete structure in the middle of the tower, which will house the three elevators and then also the emergency staircase behind that. And as you can see here, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten different floor plans. So each floor will have ten units. And it does look like the bottom three and the top three here all have their individual balconies. And then the two one bedrooms on the west side and the two one bedrooms on the east side will have a shared balcony space, most likely a six foot tall partition in the middle. Um, usually it's like a frosted glass. As we can see on the very top, the plan A's, this is an A1. Here we have an A6, A5, A3, A7, A2. All of the A plans are the one bedroom floor plans. And then we can see the B plans are the two bedroom floor plans. So we have a B1 over here, B2, and that's it for the Bs. Plan C's, those would be the junior three bedroom plans with two bathrooms. And then plan D would be three bedrooms, the regular three bedrooms with two bathrooms. And if we look on the bottom of the page, you can see that there is a direction here. So north would be up here. So north is here, which means south is on this side. This is the east side and that's the west side. 
The rest of this package would be information on the floor plan, so a larger view of what each floor plan would look like. I want to point out down here, you would be able to see from levels 9 to 27, 30 to 40, that they'll all be the same. 10 units per floor, um, 1, 2, and 3 bedroom homes. Levels 28 and 29, half of the building would be the amenity space. The other half of the building would be the residential homes. So it does look like all of the amenity space because this says open to below, that means the amenity space is two stories high. Okay, so this is their, I believe it's one of their smallest floor plans. This is the A1 one bedroom, one bathroom floor plan. The interior space is 494 square feet with a 72 square feet balcony that totals to 566 square feet. Now, looking at this floor plan, you can see that they have a linear kitchen over here. This is the front entry, coat closet, HP stands for heat pump. So that means each individual units will have their own heat pump that controls their cooling and heating system. Here's another coat closet, and then we have a washer and dryer on the side. So in the kitchen, just to show you what the labels mean, um, MW is for microwave and slash oven, which means this would be a microwave slash oven more, most likely built into the wall. And in the kitchen, further beyond that, this would all be a countertop and the dotted line means that above that countertop would be storage cabinetry and we have a four burner cooktop over here with the dishwasher is DW and there's a sink on the side as well here's the living space and when you see the doors like this and with an arrow that means this is a sliding door to the balcony and then we have the bedroom a walk-in closet and also a bathroom okay so this is the A2, which is also a one bedroom, 499 square feet. We have the A3 floor plan, which is 501 square feet. And this is a floor plan on the east side here. A5 is a floor plan on the west side, 518 square feet. A6 is 531. A7 is a one bedroom, 535 square feet. Okay, so B1 would be our first and most likely the smallest two bedroom. So this is 759 square feet on the interior space. And this balcony here is 131 square feet. So I just want to touch on some points here to show you what these are so with this floor plan as you can see it is in the corner of the building and this would be the northeast corner of the tower and when you come in through the entryway there's a coat closet washer and dryer your heat pump this is your first bathroom another coat closet then you go in and it's a l-shaped kitchen which allows you to put a dining table in the middle and then your living room space on this side. So with this one, you can see that the master bedroom has its own ensuite. It does look like this would be a walk-in shower ensuite versus a tub in the other bathroom. And then the second bedroom over here. So outside in the balcony, you'll notice this dot here. This means that there will be a pillar outside in the balcony. Okay, so B2 is the opposite corner of B1, and similar to B1, it does show that there will be a pillar outside in the balcony, uh, which is still, you know what, it's actually a positive. You do need some structural support for the building, of course, and sometimes developers build these pillars on the inside of the home, which makes placement of furniture really difficult. So it's actually a good thing that these pillars are located on the outside of the home. So you could just, um, you don't have to worry about furniture placements being an issue, that kind of stuff. 
This is their C plan, which is a junior three bedroom, two bathroom plan. And this floor plan is 874 square feet, 116 square feet of balcony space, which totals to 990. Now, why this is called a junior, I can see here, is because the third bedroom is not really a typical bedroom and as, as you can see it's a lot smaller than the master and the second bedroom so this one here i think i would if it were me i would use this as a temporary guest room it's most likely not going to be a permanent room of any type because you can see there is no closet in here and there's also no window in this in this junior bedroom but I'm assuming since they call it a junior bedroom, it probably fits a single bed in there. Okay, so plan D is their regular size three bedroom, two bath. And this floor plan is 954 interior square footage with a 140 square foot balcony. That totals to 1,094 square feet. Now, this is their standard three bedroom, which means it's a full three bedroom plan. So we can see that there is a master here, second bedroom right beside it, and a third bedroom on the other side. So that makes a three full bedroom, two bathroom plan. This floor plan would be located on the southeast corner of the building. Okay, so on the last few pages of this preview package it's just some information on the building itself of course if you're buying something brand new from a developer you have a two five and ten year new home warranty that comes with the home the building itself is 42 stories and it's with a linear architecture and a sleek black and white palette creating a timeless building on a west Coquitlam skyline and we mentioned this before, they have over 25,000 square feet of indoor and outdoor amenity space. There is also going to be a concierge plan for the building. They do have two color schemes to choose from. Nine foot ceilings, which is a very nice plus. A few years ago, the standard ceiling height for high rise condos would be about eight feet, at most eight and a half. So with nine foot ceilings, it gives you more space, more air space within your home. And also it makes the windows a lot larger as well to let in more lighting into your home. Here under kitchen, they do describe a little bit more about the appliances. So of course, um, if you take a look at my video from the other day, you can see what appliances that they're using. So here we have the rendering of Jinju over here and Anthem in the last few years they have also sold Winwood Green in Coquitlam. These are two high rises being under construction right now and also really close by as well is their Soko development um, which consists of five high rise towers. And then in Burnaby in, at Metro Town they have constructed five towers at Station Square. It's right beside Metrotown Mall. Very well-known buildings. This right here is Georgetown in Surrey and this is another rendering of the Station Square building. And that's it! So I just thought I'd share this information with you because I was quite excited to get all this from the sales team yesterday. And I just want to quickly mention that they also sent a VIP price list as well, um, which shows that 185 homes in this building will be priced between $449,900 to $549,900, which is incredible. I cannot believe that they are offering such um, attractive prices. So that's also a really good thing. Anthem is offering a very interesting sales program where their homes between floors 19 to 29 they'll have a one price program which means that if you are buying a one bedroom a one floor plan as long as it's this floor plan between floors 19 to 29 
all of those floor plans, all of those homes will be the same price. So this A1 floor plan on the 19th floor versus 21 versus 25 versus 29 would all be priced at $489,900. They are estimating that the completion for this tower will be early 2025, but of course nothing is set in stone because between 2021 to 2025 a lot of things could happen still. So subject to change. Now each home will come with one parking, one storage. Um, and the estimated strata fees are about 50 cents per square foot. So it does look like their one price program is going to be for a limited time only. So reach out to me if you want more information and if you would like to visit the sales center, let me know. Thank you for joining me on my channel. I hope you enjoy the information today and I will see you next time. If you like my videos, enjoy the content and want to see more, don't forget to subscribe!